Dean Gazi, you see. So we are like equally aligned with all the values which connect each of us. But I think this is such an exciting time when Ruchi is here with us because we are all talking about how we don't want to like play small, but play powerfully. And that's what her title is. And uh, I'm so excited for you to be here, Ruchi. She's like coach to many. She's also someone who has like multicultural background coming from India, coming from a family who are all artists. Is that right, Sushi, uh, Ruchi? Um, nobody's an artist in my family. <laughs> <laughs> probably except me mm-hmm. uh, my dad does run uh, and own a performing arts school so um, I have actually grown up among artists I've, artists were the people who were babysitting me I would mm-hmm. say so that influence is strongly Im- embedded in me but to answer the question nobody is an artist in my family uh, my dad is a business owner my mom retired as a principal um, so yeah Thank Here you for I correcting am. that, Ruchi. Like I thought, like, <laughs> because I know, like you have some kind of connection with artists, and yeah, I you were yeah, that was the, she the did grow up in among artists. So you, were I, I grew up, <laughs> I grew up in uh, surrounded by artists. Absolutely, I, my so dad I, has a artist heart. He has a very soft, gentle heart, and I take after him completely. He's a very open-hearted person. So he always wanted to be surrounded by art and music and some form of beautiful influence i love that and there's this part of your story i I like i love your story ruchi like how you are playing these two different roles in there and i wanted to ask you like you wrote in somewhere there like you want to leave this world behind what kind of world you will leave behind for your daughter is that something you ask every day i do as a parent um You know, that's what um, I would say parenthood does to you. You know, you step into this person who, even if she does not want to show up in the world, even if she she does not feel like she has the strength to carry on, even if she does not feel, even if she feels misunderstood by many people around her, she questions inevitably that for whom is this what is the point of this and you inevitably come back to this point this is for your future generation this is for the people you brought into this world they are naive they are innocent and they look up to you so what can you do in order to become the light the champion for these little angels right Mm -hmm. and that Uh, really started me on this journey, you know, this question that, okay, what can I do to have that influence on my kid, on my daughter? And I have all these books, you know, I I would read how to raise a strong daughter. And you can go ahead and buy so many self-help books, but nobody's coming to your own life, to your own situation, and to guide you in your own particular circumstances, right? So you've got to step up um, and you've got to become very conscious Mm-hmm. starting with yourself first mm-hmm. obviously knowing yourself and becoming a positive influence for your daughter and there's so many things that are going to come along it's not just you know uh, disintegration of sexes that I talk about in my story it has to do with body shaming it has to do with self-love it has to do with that inevitable inadequacy that majority of us women feel that has been ingrained in us from centuries right so Mm -hmm. that all of that and um it started with that and i guess um i got into this loophole of massive depression and um anxiety when i realized that um or probably just this was just me thinking that you know i'm being misunderstood what i'm seeing is not being seen by others you know you've ever walked into a situation where nobody sees the elephant in the room Mm -hmm. So kind of like that. So, but I had to step up. I had to do something and I had to uh, find answers. I love that. And I think uh, 
there was this part in the story of like cam which also comes in your story because i think all of our story all 15 author story we have some connection here and there about the petrarchy and like small mm-hmm. syndrome which we as a woman play like even when we are going getting bigger we try to shrink our own mm-hmm. power so i would love to because you did hit upon it little bit social disintegration of sexes so i want to ask you about this double standard that you see around because it's like like do you want to talk about that a little bit ruchi well uh, double standards i would say okay let's say what's patriarchy okay mm-hmm. we were to look at it i don't know what's the dictionary meaning of that but in my own world how i've seen patriarchy is not necessarily by the men around me mm-hmm. i have to bring this that we women um are very much uh, the controllers of that we are the ones who are spreading that among each other and how it comes as like uh for example you know uh, don't talk too much hmm. ever taught ever being taught by your mom or aunt you know sit mm-hmm. like a lady or i don't know um your clothes are too revealing right mm-hmm. so don't be a brat things like that you know it does not have to be overtly present in words or even it's it's a message that kids take especially when they are in the age when they are hypnotized literally you know until the age of 7 from 0 to 7 when their subconscious mind is like a sponge taking messages from the world and it does not always have to be explicit uh language based behavior it is just messages you know what the kid is sensing so i would i would include men and women both in this yes right i would include that because like i bringing myself to my previous point that you know um we women have been we've been pitting against one singular seed ever since since centuries for us our power meant controlling others manipulating others or dominating others in some way to showcase that we are powerful right versus championing with each other building each other up so there are these two things one is you can go ahead and fight patriarchy other is you can keep building each other up you see yeah. and how you make this irrelevant mm-hmm. right I so my story is about this, this. my yeah. story is about this i do not believe in fighting i'm not the person who likes confrontations i'm not the person who likes to be in any kind of conflict and i do my best very best to you know um create peace in myself so that there's a line you know i i heard on youtube from somebody that when you see injustice you know if you are somebody who truly cares about the world if you truly care about your future generation if you truly care to move this world forward you must learn to swallow injustice and work for justice yes beautiful okay cool. so that's exactly my point from this story even though i was watching what was going around i have no bad uh, feelings for anybody everybody all of us are doing our very best even the men even uh, the men who may unconsciously behave in that way it's probably not their fault because guess what it's been it's been coded in their dna <laughs> since generations yes right they're doing what they've been taught they don't know any better that's so they true they don't know any better so what we as women who are conscious women who are empowered women what can we do is we can raise i can raise my daughter and my son in a way that tomorrow when they go out in the world they are leaders yes they are they are the epitome of justice they are the epitome of equality right and it starts from the very very start as soon as they are born and um, i was a teacher i i i graduated from university of houston and did my masters in teaching and then i went to school and taught and my heart used to bleed it used to be i did not like it and i made a decision there and then i've got two little kids if i turn them out to be great leaders if i become the champion for them i think that's good enough for me and if god willing 
I am going to open a school where I want to see kids educated in a way where they, their light blooms. They're not categorized as one size fit all, or, or if he cannot pay attention, let's pop in a pill in his mouth because he's ADD or, you know, all those tags and titles, whatever. We are so quick to give to people mm-hmm. or little kids. So, and that decision I made. And that's what my philosophy is now in my life. Um, and this is what I practice with my kids and with my family. Having said that, I am so fortunate, so utterly fortunate to have been married in a family where I, I have full throttle support. My husband is the feminist husband. My husband is the one who wakes me up with breakfast in the morning, coffee in the morning. I don't cook. We totally do not play by the rules of what we see among happening among, you know, my friends are always, you know, kind of feeling, you know, anxious or something about this kind of dynamics going on in their home. I haven't seen that in my in my home. So I've got to be very, very fair here. I've got to give that credit to my husband and my family that this is about general what I have seen in my society, in my friend circle, in my um, friends of friends and, you know, just social events. And I was fed up with it. Mm-hmm. I was fed up with it. I love how you share that. And I love how you, you just said, like, there's so many things that we are ta- taught by what people say to us, but there's also so many things that we are taught yes. of the, the reasoning that we give a situation, mm-hmm. the, the talk that we have in our own heads, mm-hmm. the meaning that we give to things. Absolutely. And when I was reading your chapter and what you say, and even the title, let's, let's talk about the title. Why did you choose the word powerful as the chapter? Yes, thank you for asking me this question. So. I actually waited for two days to give a title to my uh, story (laughs) and I just couldn't think. And then suddenly there was this click that you were talking about (laughs) stepping into your authentic power. So that is your title, powerful. And that's exactly the theme of my life, right? Mm -hmm. Because, and I'm sure a majority of you have also felt that, right? That that is what this book is about. We women are so subject, like the world is designed to suck the wind out of us, isn't it, right? Mm-hmm. I know it's a very hardcore feminist statement and it is. And we quickly jump to inadequacy we quickly find faults in ourselves. We quickly start to doubt and question ourselves. And we so very quickly become powerless. Mm-hmm. We start to feel that, you know, our circumstances are not in our power. There's nothing I can do here. I guess I'm just going to accept this reality and I'm just going to suck it up and I'm just going to keep on moving, which I did in my own life. And what in, what ended up happening was that I ended with my health crashed and my sanity crashed. So I literally stepped into my power, which is, it took a long time, which is I came full circle. But to answer to your question, powerful is the title of this book because I'm teaching women how they can step into their true power. And the power may not mean controlling others or manipulating others or pitting for a table, um, a seat on the table. No, power means loving yourself just the way you are, accepting yourself, setting boundaries, following your inner compass, knowing that you're valued, waking up, knowing and believing that you're meant for a greater cause. That's power, right? So that's what my story is about. Love, love that. That's such beautifully said. And I love how you said, you know, the world is going to take the wind out of your <laughs> yourself, but you have to be the wind beneath your own wings. Yes. I feel that's the message I hear you saying over and over again. So Ruchi, I wanted to ask you, your story transforms from a moment of where you're not happy with the situation, mm-hmm. uh, where you are struggling to find purpose, you're, you're not happy with the circumstances. Then it goes back to you being a badass salesperson who's really (laughs) is being celebrated in your company for your accomplishments. How was the journey? 
what is it that hasn't been said that you would want to share uh, with someone who's actually in that position right now, who is where you were in the beginning of your story? Can you give some practical tips, advice to that person? How can they reach that stage of where you, you just did it? <laughs> you, you built your wings. Yes. And um, it again comes back, you know, if, I would say if I would to name God or give a definition to God, I would say God has a sense of humor. By God, I mean <laughs> universe or source energy, whatever you believe in, right? Mm -hmm. And here I was thinking that I'm not good enough. Um, I don't have any talents. I don't think so. I can add value to anybody's life. I'm not contributing. I'm an immigrant, helpless, domestic, stay at home mom uh, who's meant for nothing but, you know, just uh, just shove up her opinions somewhere in the room and not talk or whatever. And then we suddenly moved to Chicago and um, all of a sudden um, things start to just change, you know, new people, new environment, new circumstances. Uh, this story is also for very much for the immigrant wives here who feel the same pain that I have felt majority of my stay here in the U.S. Before getting married and moving to U.S., I was in a badass job like this and where I was outperforming again. But then I got married and moved here as a dependent spouse, you know, who did not have a social security, did not even have mail coming on her name. So really absolutely these were indications that were given to me that you don't matter, right? And if you're not somebody who knows how to step into your power, you will quickly take that message and internalize it, which I did, right? And it's a process, that's okay. It's a process you've got to understand. You will gain maturity um, over time. But anyways, coming back to that point, what I would like to tell, um, any person right now. And actually I have to tell you, a girl reached out to me in just last month who's probably in that stage of mine, immigrant stage of mine, and uh, who just reached out to me and read my uh, website, my, uh, my about section and said, I felt you so deeply because um, I relate with your story. And I told her, just wait till my book comes out because you may relate even further. So there are people who are actually in this situation, women who are in this situation. But I, I will say that, that things do not remain the same. Mm -hmm. Change is the only constant. If I can give you a practical advice or my, from my own learning and experience, change is the only constant. Doubting yourself and beating yourself up is never going to help you. Instead, channelizing that force and energy into your talents, your contribution, you know, creating some form of value for yourself. And it can be little things. It can be little things. It does not have to be big things. You can go out and do volunteer work. You can, um, you can create some form of hobby or anything that gives you purpose and meaning until you get to that place where you know you will be a badass person or whatever you want to be <laughs> but it took me time it did not happen overnight and the reason i show that is that you know i was just so sucked up in this energy of um, nothing is happening for me and i'm a victim i'm powerless and then all of a sudden Okay, you think you're powerless? Let's put you in this job where you've got to show your power, where you've got to show what you have. And even when I go for the interview, I did not think that I will make it. I just went there. I thought that, you know, my answers were not, not great answers. And I go there and I get the job and then I do the job and then I'm getting applauded and appreciated. And then my manager actually ends up uh, naming the team on my name. And that was just unbelievable. And although I ended up leaving that job in like five min five months, but now I understand why that needed to happen. That happened just for me to start seeing my own talents, my own goodness, my underserved talents, I would say, right? Which I was so, so much painfully neglecting it. And everybody, each one of us have talents. 
We're born with our own unique gifts. But the world always tries to show us the mirror that what you're not enough with. So what you got to do is you got to put that focus back into what you can do. So bring your focus back to what you can do, what's in your control. Look around and what are the things what you can do? And that's what it is about. Love that. Absolutely. You have to find the power from within. There's one section where I had, would it give me a little chuckle when I read it in your story? And in there, you're asking, what is, what, what superpower would you choose if you could choose yeah. one? And if I ask that question now to you, what would you say? I would still say the same thing. <laughs> And, and I wouldn't I, give that away. You'd have to read the book, The Wings of the Woman, to find yeah. out what's the problem. That's, that's, that's a good one. one. Yeah, Actually, I shared that with my colleagues later on, and they were laughing in pieces. And they were like, "That that's an awesome answer. No wonder you made it here. I'm like, um, I was I was feeling like I'm just totally banned from these people, from this company. They're never ever going to reach out to me. But uh no, it was fun. It was fun. I just, um, that's something about me that I've, um, I've never held myself back from speaking my mind, even when things are at stake. This was a big deal for me. Imagine 10 years of wait, and then I finally get the opportunity. And if I mess this up, right, how, how much I'm going to hate myself and, um, but I still did it. I still spoke my mind. I, that's it. And that's what I would tell people to do. What's meant Speaking for you. Mind. Yeah. That. <laughs> Thank Love you it. so much, Ruchi. I think this, this session was so powerful. And you are so, such an amazing, like, you know exactly what you're saying. I think your words, like, Thank you. I know in the book itself, there's so many nuggets, but this interview, there's like more nuggets. We can make a book chapter out of this. <laughs> it was a powerhouse. You can feel your power and your energy. As you speak. Yes, totally. <laughs> you know where you want to go and you are very much focused and that, that comes through. So th thank you for sharing and showing that to others, right? Yes. And that's what the story is about, right? The real power is knowing your yeses and knowing your noes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? following your inner compass, tapping into your pleasures and desires. That's one thing I talk about in my book. That's, I have seen my friends, my married friends, my South Asian, South Asian friends um, not giving too much attention to. They, they feel that they are being selfish if they're tapping into self-care, tuning into themselves. But guess what? That is the pathway to power, power that is so profound and so sacred. Yes. Richie, I, love you you share? <clears throat> I love how you share, said yes and no. It's not yes. an if or it's an, an or, if. it's an and. Yes. And clarity is your power. Yes. Totally. <laughs> love that. Love that, Ruchi. Cam, you were saying something? <laughs> oh, I just wanted to ask her if she has a special self-care routine that, Ruchi, you would like to share with our listeners? Sure. So... Over the years, I have um, realized that I am a um, highly sensitive person. I, I'm sorry. I love my, um, my solitude is my superpower. <laughs> Coming back to your question before. <laughs> my uh, alone time, I, I need lots of time to myself to um, sink in the data, to sink in all the information, process it, and then apply, implement. Um, this is a one very big lesson that I've had to learn um, throughout my all of my experience. One common thing, if I would say, was this, that it was never one size fit all for me. Mm -hmm. I had to look into what are my deepest needs? How do I function best? And for some, self-care may, may mean um, maybe 15 minutes of warm bath you know, luxurious warm bath. For some, it may mean taking a day off. For some, it may mean five minute walk. For me, it means at least uh, like on the weekends, I take complete off from social media, from any, except for this book. But I am, most of the times I set these boundaries with myself 
that I've got to, you know, just recharge, reboot for me to give my very, very best to the world, to my family, to my friends, to my colleagues, to mm -hmm. people, to my clients, anybody. So if I'm not tapping into my self-care, I'm being selfish then because mm -hmm. I'm not giving my best to you, right? So you've got to see what are your truest, deepest um, desires. Does a warm bath help you feel beautiful, radiant? Tap into your pleasures. What's a pleasure? What, you know, so here's the thing. We learn about how gratitude is the antidote to feeling low and whatever low energy emotions we feel, right? Angle, anger, resentment. I say for us women, it's pleasure. <laughs> it's pleasure. But whether it's singing, it's dancing, it's ecstatic music, it's, mm -hmm. I don't know, um, makeup, whatever it is, eating a chocolate, indulging in self-pleasure. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we women are born to be radiant. Our radiance is our power. We're born to be radiant. And once we are radiant, we radiate inner confidence, which is welcoming, which is attractive, you know, which is not fighting for anything. It is highly magnetic. So tap into those uh, truest, deepest desires of your soul. For me, it's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so important. Taking a, <laughs> taking a big tiger nap. I take a tiger nap every day. If, if I cannot take like an hour nap, I will take a 15 minute nap. I will. And if you, if we actually go back in history, you know, um, I think Leonardo da Vinci talked about this, a guy who was a poet and he, he produced so such a plethora of work. He talks about balance, how to disconnect, go out, do nothing, nothing, and then come back, recharge, reboot it, bounce back. Right. So, um, I encourage all the ladies, especially the moms in South Asian cultures, we are told not to take, you know, our own time and you've got to put your own mox oxygen mask. You've got to do that for your family, for your friends, for the whole world. It's not selfish. It's not selfish. You've got to tune in that beautiful radiance in you that brings beauty in world. You're meant to bring beauty in world. So so beautifully said and that's that's such an important message because the message is most moms hear is that baby comes first everything else comes mm -hmm. first but and mm -hmm. this is so important what you mm -hmm. just said yes. every mom should listen to this and actually take that into practice that self-care is important mm -hmm. absolutely thank you beautiful. so much Ruchi. oh yeah Martina, go ahead <laughs> no i was just gonna say beautiful i love that because we are not taught that Yes. And for us to break that mold and shift that energy and show what is possible when we do that, it, it will be a whole different new life for our children and the generations after. So yes, absolutely, we have to and should do this. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, selfish is self-care. <laughs> yes. I love that, Ruchi. So we only had this much time, but if you want to know more about Ruchi's story, you have to get her story and like, you will find so more, so many more nuggets than what we already is discussed. And uh, I'm so excited, Ruchi, when this comes out. And uh, I'm just excited about our movement, which, which we are starting here. So thank you so much for being here today and sharing your heart and like really showing your power. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ruchi. I hope it uplifts many, many women. And we're all powerful women. Let's step into that, the real power. Yes, powerful indeed. Yeah. yeah.